welcome to CEM and our training time today. I have a very special guest with me today, uh, Connor Hips. Connor, how are you this, today? Doing well, Brent. How are you? I'm doing great. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself for our people tuning in? Sure. Yeah, and thanks for having me on. Um, like you said, my name is Connor Hips. I'm the Chief Operations Officer at Outreach North America, which is the ARPC's Home Missions Agency. And uh, I help with a lot of things like branding, uh, marketing, and design, things of that sort. All right. Now, one of the things I, now I will tell you, our audience that I've got to know Connor pretty well. He's down the hall from me um, here in the office of Christian Education Ministries. And one thing that Connor is very gifted in is computers. He has computer skills. So I'm constantly going down there asking for your help. And I do appreciate that, Connor. One of the things that I wanted to, for our, our listeners is to talk a little bit today about church websites. Um, I know a lot of churches have a question. First of all, should they have a website? Uh, what do you think? Should a, should a church have a website? Great question. I think every church should be asking that question. And, and if, they're, if they're not, hopefully this will kind of prompt them to start thinking about it. Um, but the answer is absolutely. Um, given uh, where we are as America nowadays with marketing, um, how easy it is to go to any website on your phone in the expectation that anything will have a website, churches included. I think our churches really do have to have websites. All right. Now, I've asked somebody, I've mentioned this to somebody and they came to me, but, uh, but Connor, we have such a small church. We still need a website? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's not to compare the local church to, you know, the mom and pop shop, but um, people are expecting websites. And that doesn't mean they're, they're right or wrong, um, but it's their expectation. And if having a website is one of the you know, biggest hindrances, or maybe I should say biggest you know, ways in which we can bring people into the church by having a face, um, a forward-facing uh, website, then that's a relatively small hurdle to, to jump to bring people into the church. Well, I know my daughter's um, in that age group with uh, a lot of these millennials that we're looking for a restaurant to go to. Um, we're talking about a restaurant and she, she's got her cell phone out and she, uh, she's already telling me what's on the menu, whether the ratings it has. And so I get, you know, that that is ingrained in their minds there. And so same with church. They're looking, you agree? Absolutely. You know, they're, they're looking for reviews. If they're going to go somewhere and for restaurants, if they're going to spend their money, they want to spend it on something that's good. You know, and they're usually willing to spend more money if it's a really good thing. Um, and again, not to compare the church to a restaurant, but, you know, people, if they're going to spend their Sunday morning, not to mention if they're going to become invested with the local church, Lord willing, they want to do so quickly. And so they want to do so effectively and efficiently, which means how quickly can I get into a church that is um, proclaiming the gospel in this city? And so they want to see what is that church doing? Now, um, one of the things that I know a lot of churches and people have asked me, well, Websites are very, very expensive, aren't they? You know, they, they are as expensive as you're willing to make them. And say that with a caveat that, you know, if we want to make something good, it usually does cost money. But um, it doesn't mean it has to cost everything either. You know, I've seen websites that cost uh, $20,000 that are just as good as a website that costs five hundred. dollars um, You know, churches, nonprofits, and, you know, regular businesses alike. Um, so, you know, a website, again, it kind of comes down to the functionality. That's what's going to drive the cost. But um, more often than not, there's a way that it can be done in an affordable way. Yeah. Uh, some of the new technology now is, you know, you can just um, sign up and kind of leads you through. What do you want on this page? What would you like to have a drop down menu? So they've really made it easier in a lot of cases to have websites, I think, um, that a lot of people have no idea about. Um, now, we talked about uh, setting up your own website. Um, one thing I've seen in church websites that um, maybe you've seen the same thing, Connor, is when you go to a website, you're looking up a church, and all of a sudden, you see the date, and it's like, hasn't been updated in like eight months. Do you, do you see that as well? I, I do, and it makes me nervous. <laughs> for that church because I know that people like me and, and also people that aren't necessarily millennials 
um, you know, uh, boomers, Gen Xers, others are going to see that and say, oh, it hasn't been updated in X number of months. Um, because, you know, people put in an amount of value, they correlate value with how much something is updated. So if something hasn't been updated in 10 years, then, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure if a church is really trying to say who they are online. Right. Exactly. You know, same, thing, same thing in that case. So really a church website should be actively updated. It should be actively updated. And yeah. to that, you know, I, a bit of encouragement. Uh, I think it doesn't require nearly as much activity as we think it does to keep a church website actively updated. You know, there's some things like make sure the copyright at the bottom is copyright 2020, not, you know, 1995. Wow. Um, you know, make sure the copyright is changed. Um, make sure that, you know, there's new sermon material available, which there's a lot of way to put audio sermons online as podcasts and, and things from the past. There's all kinds of ways to update your website without spending a lot of time doing it. Now, speaking of that, what uh, should be on a church's website? What are some things that if you're putting one together, that definitely should be on there. Things that definitely need to be on yeah, there. Yeah, like I was thinking, you know, you definitely need a map, yeah. address, phone number. That's exactly right. Yeah, I would describe that as who, where, why, and how. How is kind of odd, but who, where, why, and how. So who is, um, you know, number one, who are we, you know, denominationally? Not to mention, who are we as an entity? We're a church. We confess that Christ is Lord, and this is what we believe. So explaining who you are um, and, you know, explaining kind of your background as well. That also means who we are in terms of staff. You know, again, um, we don't want to put too much emphasis on staff members, but people want to know who, who leads this church um, in that function. So that's important, too. Have faces online. Uh, where? You said a map. Yes, we need to not, not only have directions. That's good. Sorry, not only have an address, but to have directions. Um, it's the church is right past the, the red barn that's going to be on your left. Um, especially in bigger cities, um, that's really helpful. And it helps people it's a little bit more personal as well. Uh, the why. Uh, the why is, you know, why, why are we doing this? It's the purpose statement of the church. And that's not just, um, you know, until Christ returns. Um, it's certainly that, but it's more as well. It's how do we go about ministry in the here and now as we wait for the return of Christ? So the why is a very big deal. It's going to help people figure out, hey, you know, do I line up with this church and, and should I? Um, and then the how, it's kind of the outpouring of that, not to say, you know, extracurricular uh, activities or ministries, but how does how's this church uh, you love people with the gospel um, specifically through, is it through teaching and um you know, uh, youth ministry and, you know, A, B, C, or D, people are going to want to know, how does this church go about ministry? And a lot of people are just going to be asking, what does the church have to offer me? That's not, we, we know that's not what people should be asking, but Lord willing, they're going to ask that, become part of it, and then they're going to turn around by the Lord's grace and say, well, how can I give back to the church and to the local community in, in the name of Christ? Yeah, I think we need to, in, in creating a website, we've got to kind of create uh, visitors mentality in your mind if you were going to visit a church what are you looking for uh, if you have young children I mean I want to know what's, what what you have for your young children when I drop do I drop them off or they going what, what's what's going to happen their value youth program um, if they have a youth program um, thinking like a guest I think have a great help for me I know that in looking at websites and Brent, that's a great point. You know, I think we can really, a really, a really helpful act to think, what are the eight, first eight minutes of your experience as a church or at a church as a visitor? So first eight minutes at a church as a visitor, i.e., if you walk into the church, what do you want to experience in the first eight minutes? Well, I want to be greeted by somebody. Right. <laughs> I want to feel like I'm actually, you know, worshiping with um, a body of believers on a given Sunday morning. Uh, if I have little kids, I want to know, you know, do we, do we have, um, you know, teaching for them? Like, what does this church generally do? Um, you know, like, what do we have um, a children's ministry, for instance? So taking on a visitor mentality um, is extremely helpful. And the same thing is true for our website. When people come to the website, they're planning their Sunday morning, especially those that aren't 
uh, comfortable with the church. Um, you know, they may be a Christian, but they may not be involved with the local church. And so uh, they may be learning more about that. And so they may be asking the question, you know, what do I need to do at this church on Sunday? How do I not stick out? You know, that, that kind of thing. And of course, grace abounds. But we want to help them as much as we can by giving them a, you know, sermons at 12 or 12, it's at 10, um, you know, in Sunday school is at, you know, whatever time, that kind of thing. I think that um, one of the things you said was great, eight minutes. You know, first eight minutes is that important. Therefore, on a website, I would probably say it's first eight seconds. Definitely. If you look at that website, what's going to make them push another button? You know, so what they say. Speaking of that, I did, I've, I've asked you if you would, wouldn't mind sharing a pretty good website that maybe you could share about. We've talked about a website. I think uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. So if you wouldn't mind sharing with us and talking that through, I would love to see that. Absolutely. And, and I fully agree. So what, what I'll do is I'm going to share um, one really um, excellent uh, website with you. And Brent, if you could uh, give me access to, to share, I can, I can toss that up. Um, but it's for City Church in Asheville. Um, that's uh, the church of Reverend Duff James, um, who's been the ARPC for some time now. Um, and it, it's just now organized as a church and planted around eight or so years ago. Um, they have a thriving ministry in Asheville. Asheville is a, uh, a very dark place. Um, and it's a very dark place that's known for its art and uh, for being creative. And so to, in, to best engage their community, well, they had to know who their community was. They, they had to know who was there and what are the ways to reach them. And they knew, okay, to, to best reach and engage the community in downtown Asheville proper, we're going to have something that, that looks really good, it's functional, it's simple, and provides everything we need in just a sleek package. And that's exactly what they've done. Um, so as I, I mentioned Brent previously, this is um, one, of, one of my favorite websites I've seen in the past couple of years, and uh, it's just based specifically on those things I just mentioned, really going after their target audience and being really uh, careful to who they're going after. So all that to say, uh, this is their site. It's very basic. They have, um, I think, five pages on it total. So you know, don't hear me say you need to have 100 pages on your website hear the opposite, you know, make it as simple as you can, um, give less um, that entices people to ask more. So, you know, put the bare minimum on there and then have them come back to ask you questions. So if you're looking at the site, uh, this is just their homepage, uh, very simple statement here, love God, love people, love Asheville. That is true. Um, and, but it's a good statement um, for people to see first and foremost, um, especially in the Asheville area. Um, they have their brand, the colors match all the way throughout. It looks uh, consistent um, and coherent. And even the image back here goes well in terms of the colors. So overall, really good brand image. You know, we don't want to talk too much about branding the church. But again, you know, people, um, when they think of a group of people, they like to think of an image. Um, and that includes churches. It's not, a, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but, you know, when they hear of, um, City Church, I, I'm willing to bet uh, this logo comes to mind, and based on how they love and serve the community in the name of Christ, it's probably a good memory. It's probably not a bad thing. So, uh, as we scroll down, you'll see they have a quick message. Just, hey, this is who we are. This is where we meet. Here's the time. It's right there in front of you. It's exactly what you need. Um, it has a lot of spacing, which sounds crazy, um, but having more spacing, large letters, is a great thing because it means it's legible. Um, I'm 28, I'm pretty young, and I know that um, I have a hard time reading text on websites. So the larger it is, the cleaner it is, the better it is. Um, again, engaging images. There's a website called unsplash, U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H.org, um, which is the largest um, open source and free image repository in the world. Uh, and you know, I'm willing to bet they grab some of those images off of there because they have a great selection. So if you're ever looking for images, go to unsplash.org. Um, again, they have other ways that, to reach them down here at the bottom at City Church, um, ADL, that's their, I believe their Twitter handle. But again, has their time, um, Sundays. It has ways to reach them, Instagram, Facebook, um, services, things of that sort. Um, 
But again, I'm going to go through just a couple more things here to show you. But going back to what we mentioned about the who, where, how, and why, this hits all of that in one broad shot. So between about and connect, um, it gives people a very clear idea about, all right, I, I can learn about the church here. Simple. And connect. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in what I've read about. Let me find out how to connect with this church. Makes it really easy for people. And the easier we can make it, the better. So again, gives you an image. Hey, when you get to the location, this is what it's going to look like. That's super important, um, especially in the, in, in the Bible Belt. Um, people get confused with what the church building looks like. Um, you know, there's so many churches. And so they need to know this is where you're going. Um, they have a map. They have contact for, you know, if you need to contact the church, the email is right here. Information for contact, church office, things of that sort. And of course, a contact form, which brilliant here that they put a staff member will contact you in two to three business days. Expectations is a great thing. And then moving on, we can go to sermons, um, which again, things like this are not nearly as expensive as they once were. It's actually really affordable to make a recording. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you can contact Brent. We can help you with resources to do that. Um, very affordable. And then to get it online in a format where it can be listened to later on. Not nearly as difficult as it once was. And it's actually a very fluid and easy process nowadays. And, uh, and we can certainly help you with that. And then also another thing that I always tell people they need to do is have a giving option online. Uh, reason being is more and more, especially in light of COVID-19, people are moving to a digital method of giving. And, uh, you know, one, that was because millennials might my, like myself, just don't carry cash because I, I forget to. But now more so than ever, uh, people don't want to touch, um, you know, the tray that's passed yes. or what have you. And so this gives them an easy way to give. And we want to make it as easy as, uh, as easy for them as possible. Otherwise, they're going to say, you know what, I'll come back to it tonight, and then they'll forget. Um, we all do that. So make sure you have a giving page, have a platform, and provide ways, you know, ex explain it like um, City Church has here, ways in which you can give. Provide different options and uh, give them all the options. Again, giving options online, there's a lot of things we can do about that nowadays that's really affordable. So again, if you have any questions, contact Brent, and we can, we can kind of help you with that. And then worship online. This is another page that they put up just for now in light of COVID-19 where um, I know for this church, what they do specifically is put up um, the video uh, pre-recorded at a certain time on a Sunday morning. They didn't want to have it live because they didn't want to make mistakes per se. Um, you know, with being in front of the camera, it's just different. Um, but they also didn't want to make it as though just drop in whenever you want. They intentionally said, Sunday mornings, 10 o'clock, the video is available. At 11 o'clock, it won't be available. Um, something of that sort. And so they just made this page for the season and, and put it up for the time being and put a little message at the top saying that's the option they have. But that's their website. Um, as you can see, the brand is um, clear. It's compelling. Um, it, it looks good. And it's also, um, again, really specific to the people they're reaching, which are um, so people who live in a very dark place, that's very art driven in Asheville. And I, I really think they, they have nailed the target audience while also serving the local church well. Well, it's interesting, um, Connor, because you bring up a good point. This is directed toward guests. Yes, you, don't, you don't see a calendar of events um, and, you know, or different things for church members. So would you say if, if, um, there is a place for church members to, to get on that, but the main purpose of this w of website should be to communicate. We're here. Here we are. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, hear that, I think, from both of us as a word of encouragement, because um, it, it can be a large task to make the website um, member driven, just in terms of, well, here's all the resources I want to provide for the members. Um, there are other ways we can do that. There are other ways that we can provide even digital resources outside the website for members to, um, to, to bolster them in Christ. Um, in the meantime, for the website, this specifically needs to be for visitors. 
And even more so than that, think of visitors who have no idea who Jesus is. Um, make it abundantly clear that Christ is Lord through your sight. Tell them about what you do and how you go about that. Um, and that's, I mean, it doesn't have to be a whole lot more than that. Again, that was a five-page website, and it, it hit really all the marks in my book. Excellent. Connor, thank you for your help today. We didn't want to carry this too far, but we did want you to show us a site that looked really good, how to create a website. But we do encourage you, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us. I'll put up an email here in just a little bit. Um, but we're here to help you guys. Any questions you have about a website, what you should be putting on it, anything else, please let us know. Connor, thank you for your time, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you, brother. All right. Take care.